In this lecture example, we look at section 8C. Now remember for section 8C, you need to know what happens um, when the shares are purchased or issued. You need to know what happens then. You need to know when the shares vest, what happens then. And you need to know if the shares are sold. What happens? Okay, so let's look at this example. APTY Limited issued 2,000 shares to each of its three directors on the 1st of March 2013 when the market value of the shares were 11 rands per share and the directors had to pay 5 rands per share. Okay, <clears throat> so the directors had to pay 5 rands a share and the shares were worth 11 rands. AP2 Limited issued the shares at such a discount to the directors as it wished to align the company's long-term objectives with that of the directors. In terms of the agreement with the directors, the shares would only vest in the hands of the directors on the 1st of March 2018. So again, you see, they got it on the 1st of March 2013, but it will only vest on the 1st of March 2018. And when it vests is when you get taxed on it. And if the director was still director of the company. If the director left the company before then, the shares would vest at the date of resignation. But it would have to be sold back to the company at its market value at that date. And then we give you the market value. So there's two vesting periods. One March 2018, or if you leave, at the time that you leave. And the market value of the shares on the 1st of March, that's when it vests, was 22 rands per share. And then we give you information for the three directors below. Okay, so let's do director number one. So what you need to see is, first up, I'm going to show you all the implications. On the 1st of March 2013, they issued. So in the 2014 year, for director one, He gets the shares, he gets 2,000 shares, he pays 5 rands for the share, but it's worth 11 rands. So on the date when he purchases that, you have to, so this is now before it vests, that amount will be included in our gross income. Right? The reason for this is because there is a section... Section 10.1 in D. Okay. Remember that. Which shows you that if you have received this amount of gross income, but the shares have not yet vested, then it is exempt. So you can see at that point in time, in 2014, when he got the shares, it hadn't vested, so he's not taxed on it yet. Then what happens? He resigns from the company on the 1st of April, and the market value at this time was 4 rands a share. Now remember what they say. They said the director left the company, then it vests on that date. So he sells it on the 1st of April 2015, so this is the 2016 year. So when he resigns, remember now, it vests. And how do you calculate it then? You say the amount of shares times... The market value on the date of vesting, 4 rands, minus the amount that you've paid for it, 5 rands. Okay, so see what happens there, guys. We've got a loss, a negative amount. Section 8C tells you it's an income or an expense. And now, it's the sale of the shares. So proceeds... 2,000 times 4, that's how much you would have to sell it for, 8,000. The base cost, this is important now guys, the base cost is the market value of the shares on the date it vested. So also 4 rands. Right, so there's a null capital gain. Right, so just to show you. Right, and uh, this one didn't now show. I didn't show the the disposal in here, but basically, two thousand shares times four rands is eight thousand rands. Base cost, same thing. The base cost is important. That's the rule that the H schedule tells us, paragraph twenty-one H. 
and it says so our CGT is null. Alright, director number two. So this guy was involved with the company on the 1st of March and retained the shares. So this person did not resign or disappear like the first guy did. Okay, so let's quickly do director number two. Right, so director number two, on the date when they get the shares, the first time, the shares have a market value of 11 rands and they pay 5 rands a share. So that 2,000 rands gets included, but because it has not yet vested, the full amount will be exempt. Then, remember, it vests on the 1st of March 2018. He is still involved at that point in time. And the market value on the 1st of March 2018 was 22 rands per share. Right, so this is now the 2019 year. So the shares vest. 2000 times it's worth 22 rands a share. 22 rands a share minus what you have paid for it. Okay, and then guys, this person didn't sell it, but if he did sell it, the market value would be the base cost on that date. Right, and then we have Director 3. So Director 3 sold the shares on the 1st of August 2018 for its market value of 25. So again guys, it vested on the 1st of March 2018, and this person then sells it at a later stage. Right, so the first thing that you will need to see this is also in 2019. The first thing that you need to see is that everything is going to be the same in the 2014 year. Right. Now, 2019 year. The vesting of the shares. Right. So it vests when it is worth 22 rands. Remember, it vests on the 1st of March. Then this person now goes and sells it for 25 rands. Okay, it's capital nature. There's nothing that indicates it's not. Proceeds. Right, so the proceeds is 2,000 times 25. So 50,000. The base cost is what? The market value of the shares we net vested. So, the 6,000 rands over there, that is our capital gain. Okay, and again guys, normal capital gain, CGT, as we know. Great, that's it.